Hello everybody. Today I've got something special planned. Today I'm going to be installing and reviewing a tiling window manager named Qtile. So, what is Qtile? Well, we go to their webpage at qtile.org and at the top of the page we have a little blurb here. Qtile is a full-featured hackable tiling window manager written and configured in Python. Now that is really the key thing there, that Qtile is written and configured in Python. Python is a very popular programming language that millions and millions of people know and love. So that really should attract a large audience to Qtile. It's not written in some obscure programming language that not that many people are comfortable with. You know, for example, Awesome Window Manager, which I love, is configured in Lua. How many people are really Lua masters. Not that many people. Uh, an even better example would be Xmonad, which I think is fantastic. But Xmonad, that tiling window manager is written and configured in Haskell. I mean, who the hell knows Haskell? Continuing along the uh, on the home page here, we have a little bit written of, about the benefits of using a tiling window manager. I'll go over it briefly, but it optimizes your workflow. Uh, it effectively uses screen real estate by automatically arranging windows with minimal visual cruft. And it saves your wrist from RSI by ditching the mouse and driving with the keyboard. So a tiling window manager is primarily keyboard driven. You, you really don't need the mouse at all to, uh, to operate inside a tiling window manager. Now uh, there's a million tiling window managers out there so why Qtile in specific? Well. Qtile is simple, small, and extensible. It's easy to write your own layouts, widgets, and built-in commands. Again, it's written and configured in Python, so if you want to hack on it, you know, go for it. You know, it should be pretty easy to, to, to hack on Qtile. The community is active and growing, and of course Qtile is free and open source software. Looks like it is distributed under the MIT license for those interested. So. Today I'm going to be installing Qtile inside Sabion Linux. A few days ago I installed and reviewed Sabion Linux. And for this review of Qtile, I thought Sabion was a good fit for it because Sabion is a rolling release distribution. It is Gentoo based. So we're going to get the freshest packages by installing Qtile on this machine. Uh, another good reason why I chose Sabion here to install Qtile on this because this particular edition of Sabion was the minimal edition that I installed. It came with the Fluxbox window manager installed and not much else. So this is a real bare bones system here. Uh, perfect for us to do this install of Qtile. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get to a terminal and go to our package manager and install the Qtile window manager so I'm at the uh, login manager here inside the Sabion minimal Fluxbox edition here so let me log in to Fluxbox so I can get to a terminal and I'm going to launch Xterm and now that I've got my terminal open I need to switch to the super user to the root user so SU and then my password and then to install Qtile and Sebion I need to type equo space install space the name of the program which in this case is Qtile I hit enter and it'll begin installing I'm not going to hit enter because I actually already installed it I installed it a few minutes before I started recording this video so let's move on I'm going to re reboot the machine now so I'm still root so I just need to type reboot hit enter wait a second for it to reboot alright we're back to our login manager now that we've installed the Qtile window manager the bottom left here I have desktop Fluxbox if I hit this drop down menu I should see Qtile in the list and there it is so I'm going to select Qtile type in my username my password and voila, we are inside Qtile now. 
Okay, the first thing you will notice when you first log into Qtile, regardless of what distro you install Qtile on, it, they're all going to look the same. You have a panel by default at the bottom of the screen. That panel contains some letters. A S D F U I O P. What do these letters mean? Well, I've got my hand on the mouse right now. If I clicked on S, you see, we move to S. If I click D, D is highlighted. I'm going to click back on A. Obviously, what these represent are workspaces, you know, desktops. Now, they very well could have numbered these 1 through 8 instead of A S D F U I I O P. But they chose letters in this case because these letters correspond to the keyboard command to quickly move between these workspaces. Again, tiling window managers, you do not use the mouse normally. Uh, you use the keyboard. So to change to workspace S, I type mod key, which is the super key, mod S gets me to the S works workspace. Mod D moves me to D. Mod F moves me to F. U, I, O, P, back to A. All done with the keyboard. Very simple, very intuitive, very fast. Okay, so we know how to navigate through the workspaces. How do we actually run a program? Well, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, probably the most common way to open up a program in Qtile would be to simply open up a terminal and then run whatever you want to run from the terminal. To launch a terminal, you hit mod key, the super key again, super key, enter. So super, enter. If I hit super, enter again, you see, I get a second terminal. How do I close these terminals? Well, mod W closes the program that's highlighted. So in this case, the left side terminal is highlighted, mod W closes it. Now the right terminal is highlighted. Mod W closes it. Back to an empty workspace. There is a second way to launch a program. Qtile comes with a command prompt, a, uh, a program launcher by default that is mapped to mod R. So mod R, you will see down here in the panel, you have spawn, colon, and then a cursor. Just type whatever command you want to run. So I could type extern. Again, launches my terminal. But I could have launched Firefox or an email client or an IRC client or whatever. So mod R, mod R, and then type the command. So in that case, I launched Firefox. I'm going to close Firefox. Now, you'll, you'll remember mod W closes. Mod W on the X term here will close it. And that is basically the default config for Qtile. I, I pulled up their web page here. You can read it at qtile.org. But here are a few of the default key bindings when you first install Qtile. This is just so you can navigate around the system. But eventually you want to create your own custom configuration for Qtile. And I've already done that. I've played around in Qtile before. So I have some config files saved from in the past when I've used it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly spend some time. I'm going to set this up the way I like it. And then I'm going to come back in just a second and show you what Qtile can be configured to look like. So all I did was I spent a few minutes pulling down one of my old config files for Qtile that I, I used in years past and loaded it up inside this virtual machine. It, it's not going to function you know, correctly for everything because it, it's an old config file, but it at least shows you some of what is possible with Qtile. You see I've moved that bottom panel to the top. I've also renamed the workspaces. They're no longer named A, D, S, F, etc. I've actually given them real names dev, www, sys, doc, virtual box, chat, media, graphics, and uh, those names, you can tell what 
kind of programs I plan on sticking in these workspaces. WWW, for example, if I, in my case, I've set up the config to go to the workspace by numbers. So WWW is the second workspace, so mod 2 switches me to that workspace. Now I could open up Firefox here. I could go to mod 1 to go back to the first workspace, which is div, and I could open up, say, a, a X term here, or even, you know, launch something like Vim, or what have you. And now mod 1 is this workspace, mod 2, oh, excuse me, mod 2, mod 1, mod 2, mod 1, mod 2, mod 3, mod 4, you see, very easy to move around with the keyboard. These tiling window managers, uh, because of the nature of them, they're best used by people that live inside a terminal, you know, that have a lot of terminals open, or uh, do a lot of text editing. Text editing, you know, if you live in a text editor, a plain text editor in particular, do it. So if you're a programmer, a scripter, coder kind of guy, you're gonna love a tiling window manager. You're gonna love Qtile. And you know the kind of programs you would launch would be command line programs or text mode programs and curses programs such as you know the Ranger file manager here which is a terminal based file manager or I could launch something like HTOP. See what else I have the I IRSSI IRC client installed. Uh, let's see what else I have on this config mapped. This looks like uh, I've got the Lynx web browser, which is a terminal based web browser. And let me just cycle through some of the, the layouts here again for you. Show you how the layouts work. Just to move around a little bit. Now you see that I have a highlighting around the window with focus. This is the program that's got focus now. So this is like if I typed the command to close a window, HTOP is going, going to close right now. If I wanted to close, say, the Lynx web browser, which is sitting on top of it right now, how do I get the focus to move here without obviously moving my mouse? Because we're not going to use the mouse in this. Well, you do that with the J and K keys on the keyboard. Usually you hit the mod key and then J or K to move around. Let me demonstrate. And you see how I'm cycling through the windows, moving the focus. J goes one direction, K goes the other. When I get to the one that I actually want to close, I stop on it. I type the, the key command to close this window. And that window is gone. Let me change the layout again. Anyway, I'm just messing around. Again, this config is not set up properly. There's going to be some bugs in it because I didn't spend any time uh, with it at all. It's an old config, but I'm going to set it up to, uh, to actually run in this virtual machine, live in it for a little bit, you know, at least, you know, sometime every week as I keep this Sabion installation up to date because really I'm also reviewing Sabion right now. But I'm going to keep playing around in Qtile. Uh, I, I quite like what I've seen so far. It's very simple, very intuitive. The config file, let me show you the config file that I'm using. Yeah, some of these windows do not want to close. Again, the config might be broken. So I've loaded up my Qtile config uh, here, this is inside Vim, and you can see some of what what you need to set. Here is a list of basically my key commands that I've chosen to use and, and what they do. I've left little notes to remind me exactly what each of these does. In my case, mod return, mod enter, super enter, opens a terminal, mod tab, toggles through the layouts, mod shift C, closes windows, mod shift R restarts Qtile and so forth and you see it's pretty simple even somebody without any programming background should be able to figure out how to uh, 
you know, modify this to their liking. Further down my config, I've got uh, key mappings to apps that I want to open. I've got them set to my keypad on the keyboard. So mod key plus one on the keypad opens up the Ranger file manager. Uh, mod key plus keypad two opens up HTOP and so forth all the way to keypad nine. And moving down the config, you have settings for color. This sets the color for the top bar. And we have the group layout here. You can tell dev, www, sys, doc, bbox. This is the names of my workspaces here. Moving down the config, at the very bottom you have the layouts I've chosen to use. Uh, and that's it. That, that was the entire config for, for what you see here. So let me close out out of that. So Qtile, very simple, very intuitive. Uh, like I said, if you are a keyboard guy, if you live inside a terminal, if you are a text editor guy, if you are a Vim user or an Emacs user, uh, you would love uh, window tiling window managers in general, but you, you might want to give Qtile a try. It's not as popular as a lot of the other tiling window managers out there. It's got a small community behind it, but they seem very enthusiastic. I, I looked around the internet. They seem friendly. They're looking for people to join them, and I think it's a, it's a worthwhile project. Uh, peace, guys.